what's your secret? How can you be so good and everybody else is so average? Um, most people don't actually, most professional investors, the reason I'm putting this in quotes, mm -hmm. most professional investors don't even read financial statements. Really? Oh. Shocking. Yeah. No, and yeah. I want to, because Warren Buffett and these big time investors used to say this all the time. Um, and I was, and I honestly didn't believe it. Um, I was like, mm, that's whatever. He just talking about Wall Street because he doesn't like Wall Street and he just doesn't yeah. like the vibe. It's 100% true. <laughs> Most oh. professional investors, I'm putting that in quotes on purpose because to me, that's unprofessional. That's completely unprofessional. It drives me insane. If you're going to be managing people's money, you need to actually do the work. What most professional investors do is say, for example, um, you're working for somebody who is managing your money like a, um, like at a, uh, what's, I'm trying to think of a company that manages money, like a certified financial planner. Most certified financial planners don't actually read stock reports. They don't read uh -huh. their annual reports, their proxy reports, stuff like that. They're more salespeople, which is fine. Um, but that also means they don't have the informational advantage that I get from actually reading the financial reports, finding the hidden information, mm -hmm. finding that could lead to positive things, but also um, more importantly, finding the potential red flags that keep me away from stocks, um, for bad stocks that I would lose money in. Because, and, I, and I'm not saying this is special or anything, it's just putting in the hard work, but most, um, most investors, and again, I, when I first started, this is what I did. Just look at the metrics. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And when I say metrics, they look at like the profitability ratios, the profitability, like in absolute dollar terms. That's what most professional investors do. They care about that stuff and the story. They don't actually read the financial reports. Um, but I do that to get an informa legal informational advantage over other people who aren't willing or can't because they don't know how to read the financial statements well. I get a legal informational advantage over them by just doing more work and doing do more due diligence than other people. That's incredible. So you're utilizing the rule that's a pretty well-known rule that in order to do better than average, you have to be willing to put in more work than average. Yes. Nice. When this I say that, secret. no, no, not a secret. Um, and when Very I say cool. that, to give you context into that, when I evaluate a stock or any investment, this goes for commercial real estate or whatever, I put in hundreds of hours of research into one opportunity. And if I find something in hour 99, after doing 99 hours of research, and I'm almost done, if I find something that's a major red flag, I won't invest in the company, no matter what, if it's a major red flag. And when I say that, I mean, like I something that makes me not want to trust the managers. So they're doing something wrong, in my opinion, it could be morally, could be legally, could be ethically, most of, most of it's not a legal issue, most of it's just something that rubs me the wrong way. But if yeah. I find something that doesn't allow me to trust, for example, the people running the company, I will not invest in the situation no matter what. Huh. So you not only look at the company, you're also looking at the character of the leadership and then for any what hidden dragons and hidden gems in these reports. And that's why you read them. That's what I'm hearing. Yes. So yeah, that's 100% correct. And um, to your question on the managers, yeah, this is something most investors don't do either. They read the financial reports. If they read the financial reports, they just read the numbers and they just kind of look at the numbers. My number one rule, well, I have two number one rules. Number one rule is Warren Buffett's number one rule is, number one rule is to not lose money. Sure, yeah, good rule. My downside, protect risk, because that not only increases your returns because you're losing less money, but it helps compound the money faster as well. My second number one rule is if I don't trust the managers of the company, the executives running the company or the board of directors, I do not invest in the situation, no matter what. Good to know. This is a smart approach. All right. So there's no, you're not, this is, there's no tricks here. You're not trying to tell people, I have secrets that other people don't have. You know, I see that so much in the advertising of other financial investors. And of course, all over YouTube, you have yeah. the people that are giving advice on this and buy this right now. and. I have the number one secret and you're over here saying, just read the public report and use your brain. That's, you know, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 yeah, no. that's yeah, I love essentially, it. Essentially, essentially that's it. You have to have the proper yeah. mindset. Yeah. You have to put in the work. Yeah. And you have to have confidence in yourself. You have to have confidence in what you're, okay. hi, you Lily. Um, um, 
you have to have those three things or you can't. And <laughs> that is outside of the valuation stuff. If you, anybody can learn the technical, how to, if you can understand sixth grade math, everything I do is sixth grade math. I don't use ex expensive, oh. I don't use, um, not expensive, I don't use um, complicated Excel formulas, I don't use complicated math or statistics or calculus or anything like that. If you can do sixth grade math, you can do everything I do. Huh. It's not, nothing special. But right. yes, you have to be willing to put in the work, you have to be willing to put in the minimum, more than the minimum amount of effort um, to understand things, yes. Mm -hmm.